Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we're gonna continue the Athlon MP build and actually do some building. So this is part two. And as you can see here, I have two new coolers in new old stock. I don't remember the model, it's just a number. Kind of weird, but uh, we got a couple of slugs and like you can see there's paste on them already because the new old stock. I'm not gonna use the old paste then, but uh, yeah. So these are 60 by 80 millimeters, so 80 millimeters wide and 60 wide on this side here. So these are 60 millimeters fans, they are 15 millimeters tall, and I think they're four or four and a half thousand RPMs. So you can actually have a listen to one of them here at 12 volts. So it's not too bad. So fine, but we're gonna have two of them. So I am going to rebuild another system, a couple of systems. So I got uh, these two over, they're basically brand new too. So these are 25 millimeter thick fans, they are fractal fans. Don't think they make those small ones anymore. So these are two and a half thousand RPMs, and a lot more modern overall. They're not fancy, but they're but that's two and a half thousand RPM. And like I said, they're thicker, so they're definitely gonna move a lot of air still, about the same, I would guess. They're definitely good enough for uh, not on Thunderbird 1400 or something like that, 72 watts, and the uh, MPs we have are 68 watts. So I know they're good enough because they match the spec of uh, a cooler I had to replace the fan on. I used one of these because it matched the original specs and they were rated at 72 watts those coolers. And they're basically, I think they're even slightly smaller than this one actually, so the heat sink's gonna be bigger too, so more efficient. So yeah, and also I'm thinking of something that in a pull configuration and we can go to Y later, but it uh, has to do with airflow in the case. So I think pull is how I want them. And uh, that might reduce efficiently a few degrees on the cool heat sinks with laminar flow, but uh, the fact that these heat, these fans are bigger in thickness, which means more blade surface area and uh, better angle of attack, I think that's gonna make up for it anyway. And these coolers are rated for any socket A CPU as they are right now. Uh, I don't see a problem with temperatures, with these ones. These are, this is bigger than the small one I have on right now, so yeah. So that's the plan to get the new cooler on the motherboard and actually put it in a case. So here is the motherboard again, and I have checked both CPUs, they are identical as far as I can tell, both AMP marked, and uh, yeah, everything seem, seems to be identical, so I think these were bought as a pair from the same place, so that weird Athlon MP and just Athlon in the in Linux and in some programs seems to just be a reporting issue, nothing else. So it's time to mount some actual heat sinks on this thing. So I'm actually gonna start by removing the fans on these. I think we keep these frames, not the best looking ones, but they might actually do some good here, so let's keep them. So, finally, it's a bit difficult to get them on, but they're on now, so I think this looks kind of cool. So, time to mount the coolers, and I put a piece of uh, thick paper here. Uh, just in case of a slip, I never slipped once in uh, 20 years with socket day, but uh, you never know. And there's two of them on this, and it's tight, so yeah. I'm just gonna put this one on the right side here, just to give some protection, just in case. And later, the board's tent, I have a piece of uh, thick plastic underneath there. And I have repaired other people's board from 
trace and component and I think it was component damage like can I sometimes you, people slip there, there's no physical there's visible damage but uh, you can crack resistors and stuff around which makes the board not operate so yeah Let's see if I can get these on these capacitors in the middle are quite annoying I just need to get the hook on on the first side so this no free lunch on these. This is some MX4 paste. I like to put it all over the die. And the excess is gonna squeeze out because you have such a small die and so much pressure. You can obviously add too much paste, but it's not gonna be too much on the core. It's gonna have a lot more squeezing out everywhere. So I'd rather have too much than too little because you don't want the part of the core not covered like a corner or something it's gonna lead to instability and stuff which i have seen and people don't apply paste properly on socket days and suppose they could apply to pension trees too but they're not that as hot chips so not as sensitive so yeah and the tricky part is to get the first side on here that's something also make sure it stays on plus we need to make sure the cooler is also free there, yeah. sometimes the coolers are made for uh, socket 370 or they just don't have much margin here this uh, they, they, ca they can land with this uh, edge here on the edge here so they get it in that tilt that you can crush the core and you can burn the ship out obviously so we don't want that, so just making sure these coolers don't have that issue because I've run into it a couple of times. So now hopefully I can see what I'm doing without killing something. I should just turn the board around. Might not be the best angle for you, I don't know, but it's more important not to kill something. I have no plans to take these coolers off later anyway, so... That's one. And also a lot of paste on that one. The paste apparently got a lot thinner all of a sudden, so I have to kind of mix it up a bit there. And it's time this thing is running out, so it might be a bad mix at the end. But the, the paste itself should be good, so I'm not worried about the paste really. Yeah, AVC tends to do good stuff, so it seems like the tolerances are very good on these coolers here. I like to always have a small screwdriver at hand because you might have to help it along in some cases. That seems to have gone fine too. So let me move the protection. So yeah, two coolers on, just hook up the fans and we're ready to put it in a case, I think. So, here we have the case. And it's one of those slightly annoying cases where you have to remove the front and then move the shroud backwards. So, you will see the case assembled, how it looks, but it's just a beige case. And it has uh, pups here, 120mm, and one in the front too. So it's a well cooled case, uh, even holes here. So I think this is very suitable case for this motherboard. It's gonna look like late 90s, early 2000. So perfectly good for that. So yeah, and uh, I have an eye sheet mounted here. But yeah, time to mount the motherboard. It's gonna be a tight fit with this case, as it is supposed to work. And this is in. There is no removable tray on this case, which is a bit annoying, it would have been nice. So 
Så jag ska ta en skruvs. Maybe I'll start in the middle. Then the reason I want to start at the back is it's easy to line up the board that way when you have to push it against the iron shield. Because it's spring loaded obviously, like they usually are. So now for the hardware I picked, uh, you saw this uh, ATI 9800 Pro, it's a 128 megabyte version, I know I said 256, so I don't know where I got that from, I was pretty sure of that, but that was wrong, but it doesn't matter, it's enough anyway for this build, and it's a very hot card, uh, like, yeah, despite this big massive cooler, I really feel like it has two modes here, high and low, the switch there. I do feel like you have to have it in high because the memory gets really hot because it's a pretty high speed DDR on this thing. Not the highest it is though. It's like, I think this 700 mesh memory running at 675 on this one. This is an overclock card, I think most around 650. And uh, like the GeForce FX5950 has similar RAM, I think. And those are, when I looked at them, they were one gigahertz running at 950. So. Slight underclock is quite common, but it might be that they're running at more aggressive timings instead. I also had to take this card apart um, in between the videos because the fan dried up. It's a sleeved fan and the, well, the oil just gunked up to nothing in my car, uh, at the bottom of the fan here. So it started to wobble and make a horrible noise, so to take it apart and clean it. So it's repaced again, was repaced before, but yeah. So fan is serviced. So yeah, that's the graphics card we're gonna use and it's overkill. Then we have the SIL 3124 PCX card, 103 megahertz. I tested set the jumpers just to see if they made any kind of performance difference to 66 megahertz PCI because you got a Got a like a jumper setting over here. So, so we got a table here for PCI X and PCI. Then so I set it to PCI 66 megahertz. Uh, they didn't seem make any difference, but they might as well leave it like that. Uh, might be needed in some cases. There's some registers I think in PCI PCI and PCI X cards, so they know what kind of card. The motherboard knows what kind of card it is and so on. Uh, Okay, so I have this Intel card and the documentation talks about that for this card. And this is an Intel GT1000, so one gigabit card with hardware offloading for packages and stuff. So that's nice. You can get some more speed out of the system. And for sound card, I had an RG2 available. And I'm gonna use the RG4 drivers. This is still gonna look like an RG2. It's not, there's really no difference as far as I can tell. The thing is, Pretty much every card I is alive, RG1, 2, 4. They're all based on the EMU 10K chipset. And uh, a lot of people go like, ah, I need a matching disk to install it. Well, you really don't because the drivers on the disk, if you just install the drivers manually, there's a tool to that. So you can even select like what type of drivers you want. want. But if, with Windows 2000, if you have the disk in, it will search for uh, search the CD automatically. And if it sees an RG2 CD, with drivers that were 42 to just take that, so that's also one way to go. And the reason I used the RG4 disk is because there were some SMP update patches, I think, to RG2 drivers. So since the RG4 disk should have newer drivers, uh, I figured that is included. So yeah, these are the add-on cards we're gonna use. For storage, we will use this uh, SanDisk X. 110 I think it's called. It's a sort of 6 gigabits, so yeah, the benchmark we did before at 147 megabyte in Linux it seems to be a limitation, I think, of the motherboard, more or less. Uh, also gonna use this Western Digital Blue 500 gig. I found this in a system I got for free, and uh, it was broken. It was a Windows install and didn't boot. And uh, I checked the smart data and this thing had one hour of running on it. And then I soon figured out that the problem wasn't the disk. Someone probably replaced this hard drive. 
the old one was probably just fine too with the new one, but there was actually the motherboard SATA controller and Enforce 4 something. They run really hot and there wasn't an OEM system, so there was no case cooling or anything, it was just the CPU cooler doing everything. So it's had killed itself due to heat. I managed to get it to run again for a couple of weeks with a fan and repasting, but then the, sh the SATA controller died again. So this drive has been running for maybe two weeks in my possession and one day, one hour before that. So a few hours. So it's it's old, it's 2013 I think, 16 megs of cash, but it's silent, it's basically new old stock. So this is gonna hopefully last a long time. And for optical unit I have this beige one. It's a, it's a slaved flash, but I think this is an NEC one. Yeah, Sony NEC Opticar. So because this is SATA and we booted that before, I used the black one before, but the case is beige, beige and I want some want one matching. And then this is this is gonna be really nice to be able to use SATA for everything, which means I can replace this when it breaks with like a modern Blu-ray one if I want to, and just repaint it, repaint the front as long as there are SATA available, it should be fine. Same thing with hard drives and SSDs. And this is fast and SCSI. I was like SCSI would be really nice from the correct point of view but I only have so many hard drives and uh, no, nothing no controller card that is like I wanted fits in the system with the graphics card so it's gonna be all SATA here so yeah let's start with the really nice API card here in the SIL card. I forgot about the issue here. I need to remove the screw or make it shorter. So let's see how this fits. I had a couple of uh, shims there. Hopefully that solves the issue. I don't think the bottom one is an issue. And next up is the network card from Intel. A bit. And at the bottom we put in the sound card I think. So any upgrades in the future could go in the middle here. So I suppose the next thing would be to add some hard drives and a, and a power supply. So this is the power supply we're gonna use. It's an AX750, so it's my lab power supply. It's an 8 plus gold Seasonic. So hopefully you can see there. It's a 25 watt total. 25 amps on the 5. So now normally we would use one of these cables here. We've got the power supply, so it's modular, and we've got uh, these molexes here. We only need one really, I think, <coughs> because uh, a graphic card needs one. But these things are kind of in the way, you could cut that off, but I really don't want to do that. Plus, I don't want anything else on the power supply, and with four of these on one harness, it's well, three too many. So my plan is actually to make my own cable. So I have a little bit of old cabling from a dead Seasonic. And of course I have one, quite an old one back in the day that had a little bit of a fritz and threw sparks every time you turn it on. It's kind of hilarious but also kind of annoying. But yeah, I figured we could make a dedicated, just like a PCIe cable for the graphics card in your model machine, make a dedicated one. So we basically cut, cut the excess off here, we have this, and then we could probably make this one fit the power supply. The difference is that this hook is on the wrong side, I think. Cut that off. And obviously make sure we only use it for this power supply and uh, be a little bit careful. But uh, I think it's going to be worth it, so we remove that. I think it will fit the end of the power supply here. So yeah, it fits. So the coloring and so on might be completely wrong here, but we have to measure the pinout of the original cable and then make splice these together to one that will work as the, to get the right voltages out in a molex. So I'm gonna start by documenting an original cable for this power supply. So what we need to find is the ground pins, two of those, and one plus five, one plus twelve. So you can pretty easily figure out this is plus and so on on this one with all the cables, but 
we know that yellow is 12 and red is uh, 5. So we go like so. And we make a short here. So we got 5 over here. Plus 5, we got 12. And we got ground in the middle and then we need to figure this thing out here so this is not connected so we can just ignore that one that's not connected can you ignore that one so i suspect the grounds are in the middle you can actually check that real fast moving this to here make sure this works so yeah The ground is in the middle and we need to figure out the plus, plus five. We don't need to know what the voltages are, just uh, need to know where it goes. So it seems to be that one. Can also make a hook here so we know that the hook up there. That is, let's say five, five, and then this should be twelve. Should be on there then. Twelve. So now we basically need to make that hook up this cable to this cable in the same way so the colors might be completely off but that doesn't really matter colors are just colors so can I also remove this extra two pin here for the eight pin PCIe we never we don't have no use for that Need to make sure we're on the right side here now so we don't mirror stuff the wrong way. So this one should go. This one should go. I'm gonna cut them at an even length is a reason for that. Because then we don't get all of the like where we join them at the same place, so we don't get a big fat bulge there and it's easy to manage the cables that way can do that one over there do that one over here and then we try to line that up here so the longest one should be the shortest one here So I think we can actually compare these now. Uh, if we connect them to the power supply, technically, without using it, just connecting it. And so, connect that one there, and the other one next to it. Should all be sharing grounds and everything, plus and all that. So we can do an initial check here. If we go ground on this one in the middle, notches up, and then we go on one of these, same orientation, notch up, I think we should have ground, yeah. And it should have, both are ground obviously, so it shouldn't matter which one in the middle we pick. And we can check the pluses, continuity, but now high resistance, so that's good. Mm -hmm. This should measure the same. Yep. Probably some charge in the caps I put in the bow slide. Yep. So. Yeah, from this point of view, it looks. 
Yeah. Yeah, it tends to be charged sometimes and it builds up and it goes false positives. But yeah. So there is our custom Molex cable for a graphics card. It's basically the old version of PCIe power. So I'm actually gonna see if we can power this thing up. We need to get some adapters for powering the system on. They're located the same way. There is the new one. We can see it due to the colors on it. And this is the old one with the post pipe. So we can go like uh, that. And we have five. And we do the same here. We should have five. And then we can do ground testing. Oh, well, ground. Uh, other rail here. Twelve. So just that. Twelve. So they match. Which is should. So we're really ready to use this cable now and, and put the power supply in the system. Time for the power supply to go in. Graphics card, we need a power for the C second CPU here. Mm nicely there so we're gonna have to do some cable management but uh, for now that will do just gonna put in the optical unit here should go somewhere around there so I have the hard drive mounted and an SSD there so it's supposed to go in here now hopefully that fits the motherboard My plan was if I can bundle this up in like like a nice uh, fashion, all three of them. So I need to know roughly where to start here and where to end. I'm just gonna tape it down temporarily so I stay there so I can keep routing them without them moving. So. I suppose there has to be something like that. Maybe I can fix. There should be different lengths for, for optimal cable management, but well, you can always get what you want. So, yeah. My idea, I don't know if I have sleeving that fits, but we'll get sleeving on here. So, I'll see if I can do that, otherwise, it will. Maybe I can do some shrink wrap just on it, I don't know. Need to mark this up to know where these go when I actually do the whole thing. So I we're out of sleeve that would fit over the uh, uh, ends of the SATA connector. Like this mm, almost if we push, but then we need to make it pass over all three of these eventually. So I just put on some shrink wrap here, that will have to do. Because I want to avoid like uh, zip ties and stuff, I want it a little bit nicer, like a harness, so but th this will have to do.
and while this still is hot we should mount it So if you heat up the cables, they uh, are pliable and will take the new shape. So that's also I usually my modular cables I usually put in the oven at like 75 or something C. So yeah, I think that turned out pretty well anyway, even if I could have used some, some uh, sleeving here. So I have cable managed system. Most things fit behind here and behind the power supply. Uh, I mentioned before that I had a reason for put, doing a pull configuration on the coolers and my idea here is that because the case fan, a big 120mm, is further out to the side and you've got this flat panel of this coming over here, then the air coming out is going to basically bounce and want to go this way due to the air flow coming like so. And any new air will go in here and obviously over here and in here instead so I will, I will avoid blowing hot air on the graphics card and taking on the chipset but uh, yeah if we need extra cooling we can add a fan and it could blow there and that air will go in here but I don't think we need that and uh, it's just a, it should be a cleaner air, air flow having the air coming out this way instead of having to go in to the coolers bounce on the graphics card and stuff and then get basically a lot of it's gonna go up again and into the coolers again. So even if a pull configuration, if the fins are spaced far enough apart that you have negative side effect of laminar flow. Laminar flow isn't a problem if the fins are spaced close enough. So then it won't matter for temperature. But the fact that I think this will recycle less air into the coolers, the hot air, will recirculate less. Should make up for any of that differences and we won't blow hot air on like the graphics card and that is pretty hot uh, already so I think this will offer a much cleaner airflow pattern and therefore overall be better for the system other than that it wouldn't really matter that much we're talking degrees here and there but yeah this is the way I decided to do it so time to power it up So Windows is installed, I did a test install with the Windows CD I made with the SIL 3124 drivers and that install went so well I decided to keep it. I had zero hard crashes or locks up since I installed the system and it's been running for like 5 days I think during filming and so on. And there's, like I said, been zero issues with uh, stability from the hardware point of view. So I had some uh, Quake 3 locked up during SMP testing, but that's a known problem. But that's nothing, uh, not a real problem. Just kill Quake 3 and try again. So yeah, we're up and running here in Windows 2000. And we have two processors and we have two gigs of RAM. So yeah, hardware wise, uh, this system is pretty much complete. So I think I'm gonna make a part three where we benchmark the system and uh, explore it. To see what it can do, what it does well or what it doesn't do that well. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day. We are going to host a public retro LAN party in Sweden on the 4th of February 2022. So if you'd like to join us you can go to braindrainlan.tk and join our Discord or check out our Facebook page for updates on tickets. 
You can also check uh, the link in the description to Victor Bart. He made a very nice YouTube video last time he visited us. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.